Would you tell them that video is now a non-negotiable for the app? <laughs> yes, I can like imagine all my clients like listening right now, like, oh my gosh, yes, she yells at us. No, I don't yell at them, but I kindly encourage them. Yes. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. The app that became a massive part of my brand, business, and legacy is changing. The CEO of Instagram recently announced that they're no longer just a square photo sharing app. It's been a gradual, but a very real boil. Video is now a major focus on Instagram. Because of all the other video apps like TikTok soaking up valuable user engagement, Instagram is following the trends. Natasha Samuel is a fellow Instagram educator, and she's been helping her students show up on the app with confidence. I'm so excited to chat with her about all of the changes to the platform and explore ways to incorporate all important video content into your strategy, even if it feels intimidating as you get started. We're talking about Reels, Instagram Live, IGTV, and IG Stories, and how to incorporate each of the video options into a holistic content strategy. She shares her advice for efficient content creation and best practices to gain the most traction on the app. Here she is, Natasha Samuel. Have you ever wished you had an on-demand mentor that could provide advice on how to improve your customer experience or scale your business? Well, HubSpot's got you covered. Introducing the HubSpot Podcast Network. It's a one-stop audio destination for business professionals looking for education and inspiration on how to grow better. With access to a collection of marketing, sales, service, and operations shows, you'll have all the information you need as your company goes from startup to scale up and beyond. Listen, learn, and grow with the HubSpot Podcast Network at HubSpot.com slash podcast network. Thanks to Skillshare for supporting Gold Digger. Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Do something today you couldn't do yesterday with classes designed for real life. Skillshare is an online learning community with so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash Gold Digger and get a free trial of premium membership. Welcome to the Gold Digger podcast, Natasha. Thank you so much for having me, Jenna. I am so stoked to talk about video. Oh, this is going to be so fun. And I have just been watching you over the last year and just soaking up wisdom and knowledge. And I think it's so fun to to connect with another creator that is as obsessive about these like nitty gritty things. So I am so excited for our conversation today. Yes, yeah, going to be so fun. I'm obsessed with it all. Yes. Okay. So walk me through, like, how did you become an Instagram expert and create a business around helping other people show up on the platform? Yeah. So my background actually started in journalism. I really loved telling stories, capturing stories. So I was kind of writing for a lot of online publications, newspapers, and that was what I was studying in college. And as I kind of started to dive more into like digital marketing, public relations, I started really diving into social media because that's become a huge part of how stories are told. And so I was kind of like about to graduate college and I had that crisis. I think like every college student has (laughs) where they're like, what am I going to do with the rest of my life now that I'm about to graduate? And I really was reflecting on like, what was my ideal career? And like, how did I want to serve people in? And what did I want my days to look like? And so I kind of thought back to my first internship experience, which was with a woman who had a digital marketing business, which I had never heard of. And she worked remotely, which I was like, what the heck remote? Like, this is so weird. And she really encouraged us to 
if you want to create your own business, your own dream life, like you can do that. And so I kind of was like, okay, let me just like start this business at 21 and just see how it goes. And then I launched my business while I was still in college, started doing social media for clients, and then went full time and really pivoted to Instagram. So that's kind of like the long story short, but it's definitely been a whirlwind. It's so cool to kind of hit that exploratory phase where you're like, wait, this is a thing. And then like, oh my gosh, this is a thing. What has it been like, especially when I look at, you know, I found you over a year ago, especially when the pandemic was hitting and people were like really questioning, how do we connect with people online? What did this past year look like for you? Because I feel like you really just became this voice of like, here's how you can show up. Here's how to do it. You broke things down in a way for a lot of entrepreneurs who maybe didn't have to rely on social media prior to show up with confidence. What was that like? Yeah, it definitely was a whirlwind. So like behind the scenes, I am like, quote unquote, doing research on TikTok, because I am not a TikTok creator. Don't go to my TikTok. It's kind of a mess. But I knew that knowing Instagram and how they work, I was like, short form video is going to come to Instagram in some shape or form. So that was kind of like behind the scenes during the pandemic. I was like, you know, at home all the time on TikTok, like I'm sure a lot of us. And then of course, I'm seeing people go live all the time. And I think we all can know that time where we pulled out our phone and there's like 10 live bubbles at the top of our story (laughs) feed. So I really saw the shift of things that I already loved and felt were so impactful for growing my own community, which was kind of like really like small at the beginning of the year to then it becoming like almost that vessel for when I really started to get a lot of new eyeballs on my account, partially due to like Black Lives Matter and everything but also because of this new focus on video. So from the back end, it was like a lot to manage and juggle. But I really stayed true to what I thought was just so impactful and helpful for video, which is like humanizing your brand, creating those connection points. And like you said, I mean, a lot of times we can't meet in person, we can't connect in person. And I think that last year really made that the fore focus of everyone's minds. And that's where lives and then of course, reels. I mean, it was just an all (laughs) whirlwind with video. (laughs) It's so cool because I like love watching other people who are comfortable experimenting with the app. And I feel like in order to be a quote expert, you've got to be willing to go first. You've got to be willing to fall flat. You've got to be willing to try things. The other day I was telling my team, like, ignore what's happening right now in stories. I'm testing (laughs) things out. I'm experimenting. I'll report back, but I'm trying to do this new thing. And like, they were all just laughing because it's like, you've got to continue to kind of guess and work ahead. And I think that you were on to so many things, you know, early, like before the time, which is, I think, just so cool. It's it's really shows your perception and and that intuition that you followed. I want to know because we a lot of Instagram educators joke about how people get so frustrated (laughs) with the app, right? Like our DMs fill up our inboxes of like frustration and the algorithm and everything. And we're not immune to those frustrations either. When things shift, it's like we're the ones that people are looking to to figure it out. So how are you feeling like on a like one to 10 scale. How are you feeling about Instagram these days? And like, where are you at with your relationship with it? Yes, I feel like if 10 is really great, I would say I'm probably at like an eight, Ooh, like good. kind of frustrated. Yeah. But I'm honestly, I feel like I, I love how you said experimenting, because yes. I think that's always how I thought of Instagram. Not like there is one right way. There is one thing you have to be doing. There is like one piece of content you need to be creating. But yep. instead thinking of this of like a constant evolution of just trying new things and yes. really experimenting. So in a lot of ways, I I know all these new updates and announcements and all these things feel very intimidating. And of course, for me, kind of relaying them. Yeah, it definitely is a lot to keep up with. But I always like to think of it as like my marketing brain goes on where I'm like, this is a new opportunity for me to reach my people, for me to grow my brand, for me to boost my expertise. And I think that's the biggest mindset shift I encourage people to do when they're they're listening to this and maybe they're like already overwhelmed. They're like, oh, 
my gosh, they're already talking about all these video types <laughs> is really figure out like, how can you make this an opportunity that you can embrace versus something that every time you see a new update, you're like, I absolutely despise this. Now I got to scratch my strategy. Like, I feel like that makes it where the app isn't fun to show up on. And I feel like that really defeats the whole purpose. Like social media is meant to be social. So yes. if we're really wanting to foster those communities and connect with our ideal customers and clients and make friendships and all those types of things, if you're not having fun and you're not experimenting and you're not really embracing the app, then of course it's going to be a really overwhelming place to be. Right. And I, I so agree with that because I think a lot of times people look at a post as like a success or a failure or a flop. And it's like, wait, 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 wait. If you even got like five likes, five people saw that and took a moment to acknowledge that. Like those five people could matter way more in the big scheme of things than 5,000 passive views. I always just love to like practice and tweak and, and explore. And I think people get like they forget that they either get too comfortable with what was working and they're not ready to, right. to what can work or they're just like, I'm just going to keep doing my thing and see what happens. So you covered this so well and I want to hear kind of your take on it. But when the CEO of Instagram announced like, hey, videos the focus. We're not just a photo sharing app. Video is king or queen, how did you feel about that? And what do you make of that announcement? So I think if you're like in my world, I, I wasn't surprised. I yeah. was like, well, this is very validifying. They're <laughs> saying what I feel like we've already seen happening. But I think I was very like overwhelmed with how panicked people were. Yeah. Because I, I kind of was like, have you been on Instagram? <laughs> like things have been changing for years. And when I really was sitting down and thinking about it, you know, stories is really what paved that way. And if yes. we all think back to when stories first came on the Instagram app, we were like, heck no, what is this? Take it off. We're on strike. <laughs> and especially businesses were like, we literally, this isn't for us. This is for influencers and for sharing with our friends. Yeah. And now I think stories have become arguably one of the most important parts of Instagram, in my opinion. Yep. But then after that, 2019, there's IGTV. And then in 2020, you know, lives really took center stage. And then at the end of 2020, we had reels. So when I look at it from like a bird's eye view, I'm like, this has been a timeline of things that have just been gradually happening. Yep. But I think also kind of how I mentioned where it's like, it's all about experimenting and there's not one right way to do it. I also don't take these things as being like the only way like we are the CEO of our marketing strategy yes. so we can figure out how to make video work for us and like I know photographers were one of the most panicked people but like you can still post photos and even like right before I hopped on for this interview <laughs> yeah. Adam actually went on his stories and was like hey so like I didn't mean that we're not prioritizing photos <laughs> so he actually went on and was like my oh. bad didn't mean to freak you out yes <laughs> yes but yeah I think I I kind of was like, you know, this isn't surprising, but I think it is interesting that they're identifying it and embracing mm. it in maybe new ways. So I think it's kind of where we're buckling up and seeing what that will look like. But I'm excited to see how video really evolves on the app, along with keeping photos and just changing the experience. Yeah. One of the posts that you put out that I just loved is you were like, don't panic. Like they're just putting words to what has already been happening. Like, totally. so it's not like all of a sudden photo posts go away. Like, I think you just gave peace to a lot of people when you were like, yes, I know this announcement came out and yes, you know, it's, it's kind of wild to hear the words behind what we've been seeing. However, this has been happening for a long time and it's up to you to either adopt it or evolve or just keep doing your thing and, and showing up however you feel called to. I mean, showing up in any form is better than not showing up at all, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I completely agree. And I think what well, you touched on so well there, and like you know this from being on Instagram for so long, is for a lot of times we were guessing yes. for a most of the part. We're like, okay, this is working for me. So like it yes. might work for you. Okay. Yeah. It works for you. So yeah, it does work. But I think Instagram's really trying to embrace transparency. I think that's just mm -hmm. how marketing and social media is evolving as a whole. So I think just because they're telling us 
these things doesn't mean that it's set in stone or that it hasn't already happened. They're just like confirming it in a way that they haven't done before, which I think is great. Yeah, I've appreciated like when they broke down the different algorithms and explained it too, because I feel like so often and I know you hear it too, is like that people think the algorithm is out to get them. But in reality, and, and this is what I always question when people are like, Instagram's not working anymore. I'm like, okay, are we talking about like likes and engagement? Cause those don't pay the bills. Or are we talking about like right. actual results? Because it's your job to tie your efforts to results. And the algorithm is meant to actually connect you to the right people and the people who want to engage. And so it's interesting. Like I do appreciate their transparency there too, because it's like, There are algorithms in every piece of social media these days, every post, every like, every search, everything we're doing is giving them clues. And, you know, it's like they're Sherlock Holmes and they're trying to help us solve the mystery of like what we want. And so I think that that was really helpful. And you broke that down beautifully. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think it was so interesting to hear on kind of things that we guessed, kind of things that we thought the algorithm really meant. But yeah, I mean, you're so right. And I think it's interesting. Like we think of TikTok, it's blowing up right now. YouTube, you know, what are, you know, the places that Instagram's looking to? Like those are probably the most smart and in-depth algorithms of all time. Like yeah. you go on YouTube, you watch two videos and all of a sudden it's recommending 10 million other videos <laughs> that you'd like. And the same thing with TikTok talk. So yeah, I think it's totally once you understand it, you can use it strategically for marketing on the platform. Yes. So tell me this because you are so good at it. But would you say let's say you have a client, not a student, but let's say someone comes to you and they're like, Natasha, will you help me take over my strategy? Will you help me nail it? Would you tell them that video is now a non negotiable for the app? (laughs) Yes, I can like imagine all my clients like listening right now, like, oh my gosh, yes, she yells at us. No, I don't yell at them, but I kindly encourage them. Yes, I think video needs to be a non negotiable. And I think stories, like I mentioned, I feel like is the first and foremost step that you need to take. I mean, it leads to those direct messages, which I feel like are so valuable. It's like the most intimate way that you can engage with your audience and on a daily, regular basis. So I think, if anything, yes, stories definitely need to be a non-negotiable. And I think when we're talking about IGTV, lives, reels, I think we need to at least be on one of the other types. And I'm sure we'll break down all of them more in different ways. People can kind of pick and choose what makes the most sense for them. But that's definitely needs to be a part of your strategy. And I honestly, I still post on my feed photos, carousels, graphics. I don't think that that can't be a part of your strategy. In fact, I think my most saved, shared and commented on posts, which are like my favorite metrics to look at are almost always carousels. Yeah. So I think it's definitely finding the mix that works well for your brand. But yes, we need to at least have like two (laughs) elements of video in there. Pretty please. (laughs) I love that. I was telling my team the other day. So part of my experiment has been with Instagram stories, because when I was in my first trimester with this baby, I was so sick and there was just no way I was showing up. And it felt so out of integrity because I wasn't ready to share the news yet. But I also was like, I want to be showing up. And I always struggle with that because I just always feel like, you know, tell everyone what's going on. And so my views just tanked. Like my story views went so down because I was only showing up when I absolutely had to. And that was generally with a call to action. And so then I was like, dang it, Instagram really does want to see what you eat for breakfast or what your kid is wearing today (laughs) or like things like that. And I'm like, the more that I started sharing just behind the scenes again, and just like our lives and like the simplest things, all of a sudden I watched as like, people were like engaging again and and excited. And it's like, I think part of the fault that happens with businesses is that they only show up when they have something to say or sell. And it's like, wait a second, like we're looking at like, they want us to connect with friends and family. They want us to connect with communities. They want us to just connect for the sake of connecting. And I think that's so reaffirming that we didn't lose the social aspect of social media, that it didn't just right. shift to a marketing platform. But I also think for business owners, it's a reminder of like, people do want to see the behind the scenes. They They are curious about your life. They do want to connect with you on a daily basis, not just when you have something to launch or sell. Do you agree? 
I completely agree. And I always like to think of them as connection points. Yes. When you think of your ideal customer, chances are every single person listening, myself included, there is someone that does exactly what I do. And maybe they even do it better. But what differentiates me from everyone else is my Instagram is probably going to be a lot of yellow. So maybe you like yellow. It. That's your vibe. <laughs> I really like matcha. I like my plants. You know, those are all little things that might seem really silly and irrelevant, but they're very intentional things that I share because I know my target audience is interested in that. Yeah. If all I talked about was Instagram, I would be so incredibly boring. I wouldn't even want to follow <laughs> myself. But I talk about my business and how I'm scaling my team, which is stuff that people are interested in. Yep. And I talk about all those connection points. And I think that's what you do so well, Jenna, is like you do share those little snippets into your life. It's not everything. You know, yep. of course, we have to have those really healthy boundaries. But it's enough that people feel like they are connecting with you in a way that just like a static feed post or just a caption can't do in that exact same way. Yes, I love that. Do you use a customer relationship management platform in your business? A CRM for short? Not quite sure what that is or why you need one? Well, I've got you covered. A CRM platform like HubSpot helps you align and manage customer interactions with your business so you can deliver consistently great customer journeys that drive growth and lifetime loyalty. With HubSpot as your CRM, you can install live chat on your website so you can get in touch with potential new clients and customers directly. You can allow these potential new clients to book meetings with you, which would be great if you're a coach or a podcaster. And HubSpot also enables you to access the full history of each customer's experience with your business so that you can have more informed conversations with potential clients and current customers and build personalized content. One of my biggest predictions for new marketing trends is definitely more personalized content and messaging. So knowing the full timeline of each customer's relationship with your business will be key to serving them the right content, offers, and messaging at the right time. Learn more about how you can scale your company without scaling complexity at HubSpot.com. September always feels like the start of a new school year, even though it's been nearly a decade since I sat in a formal classroom. But here's the thing. I haven't stopped learning. Like, not at all. When was the last time you invested time in your learning just for the joy of it? With classes on Skillshare, it opens up so many opportunities to get unstuck and push forward with new skills and knowledge taught by experts in their fields. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Tackling a new project that requires skills that are completely new to you makes the whole process take longer with a learning curve that looks more like a learning roller coaster. Simplify that learning curve with a short, digestible class designed for real life on Skillshare. At just $10 a month for your annual subscription, you could learn productivity for creatives with Thomas Frank or how to find your style with five exercises to unlock your creative identity taught by Andy J. Pizza and so many more incredible classes. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash gold digger and get a free trial of premium membership. That's Skillshare.com slash gold digger. Okay, so you've touched on this, but let's dive into it. So there are many different ways to use video. And for a lot of people, I think video is intimidating. And yeah. I think you break it down in such a digestible way. And so let's say someone's listening to this, they feel convicted. They're like, oh, no, these women are speaking <laughs> to me. I haven't shown up in video in any form what would you say is like a starting place or where to begin or maybe like even the kind of lowest barrier to entry to get started with video and how do you kind of scale up from there? Definitely. So I know we're talking about like five different surfaces total with Instagram feed stories, reels, IGTV lives. But I like to break it down instead of thinking of these five monsters, we just need to think of two <laughs> main parts. So stories, like I mentioned, I think are their own little world on Instagram, their own place that people are engaging and absorbing and connecting with you. And probably would argue maybe 50% of people probably just go to your stories. I know I'm definitely a tapper 
through stories instead of a scroller. But then, of course, we have your feed. But your feed isn't what we used to think it is, where it's just your photos, you're just your grid. IGTV videos are shared to the feed. Lives now can be shared as a replay to IGTV, which can be shared to the feed. And then we also have Instagram Reels, which can be shared to the feed. And I like to share all of these to your feed to get the best reach possible. So I like to think of, okay, figure out how often you want to show up on stories. Ideally, daily, I like to do within my business hours. That's what works really well for me. And then I like to break down my feed. So let's say you want to show up three times a week, five times a week. Pick what video content makes the most sense for you. And that can be within that three times a week. So instead of saying that you have to do three reels and then three feed posts and three lives, like (laughs) let's break it down three total, add in maybe a live, add in maybe a reel and make it make sense for your brand. And I like to kind of break it down. Like, first of all, what platform do you enjoy the most? And there's a big difference between what are you not comfortable with yet? (laughs) (laughs) And what do you genuinely feel like you thrive in? An example is that a coach probably is going to be really great at coaching and talking. So live streams are probably going to be your jam. But someone that's maybe a product business, maybe you thrive better in shorter form video where you can show your product, you know, do those like aesthetic type of videos and do a lot of B-roll and different things like that. So I feel like it kind of makes, you know, choose what makes sense for your brand but also what you think will resonate most with your target audience. And then I also like to break it down with capacity. I think that's not something that we talk enough about in the world of Instagram. But like, how much time and energy do you have to pour into these video types? So, you know, especially moms, nine to fivers, people that are scaling, like, do you have a team member that's supporting you? realistically, how much time do you have to batch? So those are all things that I like to consider. So kind of circling back stories, non-negotiable, figure out what cadence makes sense for you, and then go to your feed. What types of videos are you going to share to your feed that make sense? Is it lives? Is it reels? Is it IGTV? And stick to that. And then no, ideally, yes, we want to scale where you're including all of those. You can do that down the road once we get you consistent with what we're already doing. Oh, that is such valuable valuable advice. And I think too, it's funny, I think people often make it like more complicated or intimidating than it needs to be. And it's funny, because it's like, even with reels, the more you do them, the faster you can create them. And so it's like, of course, the first few times it's clunky. And maybe your Instagram shuts down. And maybe you don't understand that the captions need to be in a certain space. Like we get better. And I think what's happened so much in the creator economy is that we are so afraid to show up not perfect, right? Like, Mm -hmm. we're so afraid to show progress when progress is what inspires people to take action. So I just want to encourage everyone, like, we all feel the same nerves, or we all feel the same, like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. And I think it's just beautiful to like, invite in that progress. Because for so many people like Natasha and myself, the reason why we are poised as quote experts, which is a title neither of us probably would claim you know, with pride is because we've showed up and just failed and tried and made progress. And so I think it's just such a good reminder for all of us. Absolutely. And I actually think like live streams, for example, I feel like are kind of like the scariest type of video for (laughs) a lot of people. And I think it's because it is unedited and all those words, all the mess ups are going to be a part of your video. But I actually think that is like the most endearing part of lives. An example of this is, is I used to not have a phone stand, had tons of tripods. (laughs) No, I would never use them. I am that person. (laughs) And I would literally go live and my phone would like, Tip drop over. right oh it would fall all the time it'd be on my water bottle it'd be on my laptop <laughs> literally literally Ooh. and people are like someone get this girl a phone yeah. stand like and it just became like an inside joke so instead of taking myself so seriously where I'm like I'm an Instagram strategist I don't even have a tripod for my lives what am I doing I'm just gonna stop instead I was like how can I just like laugh it off because yes. why do we have to be so serious about everything oh I love that so much and like some of my best lives are like while I'm just getting ready in the morning and talking and like things like that, where it's like, people want to be invited into your life, whatever that looks like. And so I think it's amazing. And I think it's so fun too. I just feel like then you feel like you're in a room with somebody and that's the whole point. 
Totally. Okay, so you are the queen of batch working. You and I share like this mutual adoration for batch working and being really thoughtful when it comes to content creation because I think we both see a lot of people spend so much time on the creation that they forget the follow through, the results, the promotion of it. So walk me through how you plan out your content, how you record it. What does that look like? Yes. So I'm going to break down first the biggest thing that I think you need to do creating any type of video or any type of content, honestly. And then I'm going to kind of break down what my workflow looks like for each type of video. So the most important step, if you take anything with creating video, is that you need to do an outline first. That is where you're going to basically create your content. Because the biggest thing I see people do is that you want to go live, you want to create a reel, and you think that just by putting up your phone, that you're just going to create the content, but you're thinking during the process, then you're getting overwhelmed, then it's taking a ton of time. So what I like to include in an outline, and this doesn't necessarily have to be a script. I'm not necessarily a script gal, but it can be if that's your jam. But essentially, you want to take what is the main idea? So probably things that you're brainstorming, you're hearing in your industry, questions you're getting from your clients or in your DMs. So what is that content idea? And then what are the main points that you want to include in it? So chances are maybe you have a really strong hook. So saying this is exactly what the piece of content is about and this is why you should watch. And then break down what are the steps, what are the tips, what are the styling inspiration, like whatever that is for your industry. And then I like to add in extras as well. Because I think this is something that people miss in their outlines. So if I'm filming video content, do I need props? Am I doing transitions? Am I using a certain type of audio? Do I need to do outfit changes so I'm not literally running from my office to my closet, (laughs) back and forth running when creating videos never helps anyone out. (laughs) So that is like the biggest thing. And I outline every single piece of video I make. And it might seem like an additional step, but it's going to help you because you can use that outline when filming your clips. You can do it when structuring your lives. You can do it when also writing your captions or adding text to reels, which I know take a ton of time for people. So definitely outline your content. And then this is kind of how I use my outline and other workflows. So batching lives might seem like it's not possible. Of course, we can't batch the live streaming, but we can batch things to make it a lot easier for you. So in my outline, I basically break down what are the talking points I have. So if you're nervous, you can totally reference those to keep you on track and make it more valuable. I also like to use that outline to then create what is the description or the caption of the replay. And then what is my attention grabbing title? So you want to think of this just like an email subject line, a blog title, really grab their attention so they tune into the live, whether it's the replay or while it's streaming. And then do I need to do any design elements? So do I need to maybe make a cover photo? Do I maybe need to do slides? Am I promoting it on stories, which I absolutely recommend? (laughs) And then guests. I think guests are such a fun way to do lives because you're not talking to your phone, which doesn't feel very natural. (laughs) You're talking to other humans. So do you want to maybe coordinate with a guest, pick out a time, maybe get some questions for them? So that's kind of how I prep for my lives. So when I'm showing up, I'm not like waiting for people to tune in. <laughs> really ton time in the first 15 seconds. I'm really getting to the good stuff. Yes. And then for reels, this process actually looks very similarly to like edited IGTV videos. So outlining the video, of course, what are the main parts? And then if I have a certain type of audio trend, I just like to save and hoard those for yes. when I'm creating content. And I kind of just pair them <laughs> with an idea when I'm ready to film. And then filming, obviously. So I like to batch film when I'm kind of camera ready. I have my outfits ready. I have my props ready, which we all noted in the outline. And then editing. So adding my text, adding my voiceover. And then final touches is usually a cover photo, caption, and then storing your content. I think a lot of people like their camera rolls is a mess, like hands raised. I've definitely been there. (laughs) So whether you are kind of organizing it on your desktop, I actually have really loved making folders for different pieces of content, different content pillars, different batching stages. So I have a folder for like, these are reels that need to be like edited. These are reels that are ready to post. And so I 
kind of keep it organized that way. Or a little hack, if you're using a tool like Planoli or Later to schedule your content, you can actually schedule like the cover photo of your reel or the cover photo and the actual video, but like a post notification instead of an auto publish. So then it gets sent like right to your phone. So you're still automating it. You're planning ahead, but your camera rolls, not a mess. So that's kind of how I do most of my content. And for stories, most of the time, I like to actually do habit stacking. So essentially what that is, is like things that I'm already doing in my day, I just intentionally capture. So I know if I'm working with a client, I'll put my phone up and do a time lapse to get that strategic behind the scenes. I know when I get in my office through the morning, I'm usually showing my routine or what I have to do for the day. So I kind of just intentionally make it a part of my day. But I also love outlining mini trainings, kind of more structured stories, content, and kind of curating those as well. So hopefully those kind of gave you some tips on like, definitely start with that outline and then break down what are those extra steps that you might have for the different types of content. So you're prepped and you can show up as your best and show up confidently versus like, thinking through your content (laughs) while you're creating it. I think that's so valuable. I want to know, where do you get your inspiration? Because I think a lot of people are like, okay, I can get behind this planning, but like, how do I even know like what to make? Where do you find your best inspiration or what does that process look like? Totally. So I think the first thing is like community is huge for me. So comments, DMs, my clients, also what I'm hearing in my industry, like I'm always storing those ideas. I think it's so important to store them when you get them versus hoping they come back when you're actually (laughs) creating. So that's definitely where I get a lot of my ideas. But I think another thing that I've really been leaning into and I challenge people to kind of like reflect on is like what makes you different in your space in the way you serve clients or the way you think about things. Maybe this is where you'll get some unpopular opinions that maybe aren't talked about enough or people don't even know to ask questions about. Or maybe what's something unique that you do with your clients and customers that you can kind of highlight on. So I think when it comes to Instagram, I always try to think like maybe what's things that people aren't talking about in this way or that there's kind of a need for in the industry. And I also say like consuming, like listening to your podcast, listening to other podcasts, you know, looking at newsletters and blogs, I'm constantly trying to be a student. So I can think of how can this apply to Instagram? How can this apply to the content I need to create? Mm, I love that. It's so funny, because my like, explore area is like all pregnancy (laughs) stuff. And I'm like, I need to get back to like other things. But it's like, I'm clicking on like eyebrow tutorials and pregnant bellies. And like, (laughs) I'm just like laughing because I'm like, they're on to me. But I think too, it's if you're really stuck, if you go onto the explore page and type in a keyword that is aligned with either what you do create what you offer or sell, like you are going to see other things. And I I, I have a little folder of saved ones that are just like strictly yes. for inspiration, whether I want to use that audio or I'm like, oh, that was a great idea, but I could do it with this. And I think it's so cool because it's like, it's literally feeding you content that's performing totally. well and kind of giving you the keys to the kingdom of like, what's your spin, you know? Exactly. And that's why I love reels. I know a lot of people are resistant to maybe hopping on the trends or the Mm -hmm. trending music. And if that's not your jam, you totally can talk to camera, do voiceovers, choose your own music. But I love these types of trends in the space of reels because they're kind of like your outlines almost like built in the video. Like you just need to think and be discerning. and like, how can I put my own unique spin to this? And some of my most best performing reels are when I take like a very funny audio and I make it relevant to business or Instagram where people can relate and it really grabs their attention. So then when they get to my Instagram profile, when they get to that caption, you know, they're really getting a lot of value there too. I think that's the key is not just doing the trend, do it, doing it intentionally and saving those to make it just easier. Yeah. One of the things that I'm curious about, Natasha, is like, when did you start to feel confident that you could educate and share? Because I think a lot of people are so focused on mastering what they do, which is beautiful, right? I think that's the first piece of entrepreneurship is like master what your offer is, whatever that is. But when did you start feeling the confidence in sharing what was working or what you knew or what you were an expert in? 
Yeah. And I think, I feel like I've never arrived to that. I feel like I'm constantly <laughs> learning on how to do that. I feel like, yeah. but I can think back to when I first started like talking on video on Instagram, I just did it knowing that I was very afraid and that I wasn't confident in it. But I just had to trust that something that I always kind of come back to is that if you know more than someone else, you are an expert at mm. that. So I tried to lean into, okay, maybe I'm not an expert at everything, but what am I actually really great at? So I feel like maybe a few years into business and showing up and creating on Instagram, I really kind of start my started to get my reins with that. Yeah. But I feel like it's something that you're constantly discovering. Like you never arrive in your like, I know everything about yeah. Instagram. I know everything <laughs> about whatever your industry is. I feel like I'm still learning, which is kind of the beauty of it. Well, I think you do such an exceptional job of taking people along that journey with you, which is the best. It's like, I would oh. have somebody leading me that's one or two steps ahead of me than like on the top of the mountain trying to shout down from the peak. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Okay. So if somebody's listening today and they're like, okay, these girls, they've convinced me I'm going to do something. What is a good action item or challenge for someone that they could implement today and hopefully just start getting their footing, gaining traction and feeling confidence? Yes. So I think lives, let's tackle lives. So figure out how you can do maybe a live series. So what is a topic that you can dive into next month in detail? So maybe you do a part one, you know, do one each week and make it really short and sweet. Lives don't have to be super long, but really engaging, really interactive and promote it. But I think the other side of that is if conversations are your jam, sit down and make a list of like, what are four people that you could have a really really great conversation about. Maybe they're in your industry. Maybe they do something related to your industry. Maybe it's even like your clients or your students. But how can you bring them on Instagram Live? So I feel like starting with a content series, you don't have to do lives weekly, but it kind of gets your... You get the you get the hang of it. So yeah. then you're like, wow, lives are not that scary. That first five seconds, yes, scary. <laughs> but it's not that scary once you get into it. So that would definitely be my challenge for Instagram Lives. And then I feel like for Reels... like. Like sit down, go on your Reels little feed and just start to figure out like what is trending right now, what makes sense for your industry and just like brain dump. Yep. And when there's trending audios that you really like and you think would be great for your industry, save those and pair an idea with them. But also sit down and think like what are those commonly asked questions you're getting? What are those things that you can dive deeper into video and maybe just like talk to camera on Instagram Reels? Yeah, That has actually become like my favorite way to use reels and it's probably very accessible. You don't need to have music. I know music's a mess when it comes to who has <laughs> and who doesn't, but those would definitely be my tips is like for lives, figure out a content series that makes sense for you. And then for reels, brain dump ideas related to trending audios, but also some that aren't maybe just talking to camera, doing a voiceover, things like that. I think if we need proof that video is king, if you look at, and I love to do this as a business owner, is like dissecting, like what is Instagram's goal? Their goal has been for years to keep you on the app as long as you can without clicking away. Literally years ago, they admitted the one metric that we are constantly tracking is how long are people coming on the app and staying on the app? And if you think about it, videos are so much more engaging, even just a 15 to 30 second reel that's keeping people on the app probably 10 times longer than a static photo. And so when we can meet the goals of the platforms and come alongside of them as like a teammate and not a competitor, it's going to benefit everyone. And it's also going to benefit the people you serve. So if you need any more evidence, we've known this fact for a long time, but now the content and the way it's shifting is only proving that they want to keep people engaged. And it's our job to be the ones that create that engagement. And I think, Natasha, your tips today have just given us permission to be the engagers of the people that want the engagement, right? We can't complain about yeah. not getting engagement if we're not engaging <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If I can leave anyone with a message is just like, just do it, do it scared, do it messy. It's going to get better. You're going to learn from it and treat it as an experiment. There isn't, yes. you don't have to get thousands of views. You don't have to get a really great response out of the gate. Just test, experiment, and just have fun with Instagram. Yes. So Natasha, where can everybody 
everybody find you and connect with you, learn more about you and get inspired by you? Yes. So obviously I'm definitely hanging out on Instagram. <laughs> so at shine with Natasha is definitely where you can access. I have some really great highlights, some guides, and of course, reels that really break into a lot of these topics more in depth. If you're more of a visual type of person, I also have a podcast, the shine online podcast, where I talk a lot about marketing business and have some of my friends on as guests. And then I did create a free resource for everyone. So if you want some really strategic rinse and repeat ideas for live, for reels, for stories, you can go to shinewithnatasha.com slash Jenna and you can access that. And then I also have some courses, resources, templates that you can check out as well. Amazing. Natasha, thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing all of this insight. I am forever inspired and I'm ready to go record a video now. (laughs) Thanks for having me, Jenna. Oh man, it is such a treat for me to get to have conversations with other people that get obsessed and giddy over the topics that I do. I feel like a lot of times when I talk about the things that I'm passionate about, people's eyes glaze over. And so this conversation with Natasha was so fun because she has been a creator that has inspired me so much. And I just always love to see her take on things and how she breaks things down. I think she's an incredible educator, someone to absolutely watch and learn from. And I think what's so fun for me is that we get to nerd out over these things, but we also get to share what we're learning. If I take anything away from this episode, it's that you should show up and make progress, show up imperfectly. I think one of the first things that I saw Natasha create, she was not camera ready. She didn't have the perfect background and she showed up and I was like, oh wait, this is approachable. I can do this too. And so people want to watch you progress. People want to watch you try. And when we approach these platforms as an experiment, All we have to look for are the results, not if it's a success or a failure. But when we look at the results, it gives us information and insight to help us continue creating. And I love that so much. Thank you so much to Natasha for showing up today and for being a listener to this show. And thank you, our dear listener, for coming to another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Until next time, keep on digging your biggest goals. And hey, I hope that you take the challenge to show up on video. Maybe an easy place to start is posting an Instagram story that you tuned in and tag both Natasha and myself so that we can cheer you on and encourage you in your plight to show more video. I'll talk to you soon. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 